guys, it's me again, and here we go with the first of today's videos. So yeah, we're talking about Zanzibar. And so yeah, here we go, as the Zanzibar archipelago consists of the islands of Unguja, known as Zanzibar in more, in more common sense, and Pemba, along with a number of small, small inlets and all. As the archipelago is a semi-autonomous region of Tanzania and is separated from the mainland by a channel which is about 36 kilometers wide in at the narrowest point. As the name Zanzibar refers to the archipelago, the island of Ungoja is also in a, the urban center as the origin of the name. It's also been Persian or Arabic in name as in the Persian is in Persian, the name is believed to be derived of the words Zangba, meaning the Negro Coast. And in Arabic, the name is thought to have come from the words Sayin Zarba. Right, yeah. Let's do back. I didn't hear anything. I'll leave that bangle to you. Me for Zain Zalba, meaning fair is this land. Zanzibar has kind of like a rich history, as it was once the more of the most important areas in East Africa. And following Vasco da Gama's visit in 1499, Zanzibar was ruled by the Portuguese and remained away for almost two centuries. And then in 1698, Zanzibar became a part of the overseas territory of Oman, like an overseas territory of Oman, and was ruled by the Sultan of Oman. As Zanzibar became a place, uh, like a main slave market on the eastern African coast, as I ivory traders rise and an ex and an expanded plantation economy centered on centered on clothes. In 1840, the Sultan of Muscat in Oman, Said Said bin Sultan, moved his main palace of residence from Muscat to Stone Tower in Zanzibar, and he encouraged the development of plantations including clove, vinegar, and, and sugar, using like slave labour, as he established close relationships with Britain and opened diplomatic relations to the US. And France, as well as building like a trading empire, establishing kind of like naval supremacy over, per over the Persians in the Gulf. And following the death of Said Said bin Sultan in 1856, his six sons fought over succession. In the five years, of territories and trade were lost as two brothers competed for powers. Power. Uh, eventually, Lord K Canning, the Viceroy of India, negoti negotiated a comp compromise splitting the main between the sons. Uh, Said Fuwaini was recognised as Sultan of Muscat and Oman, while Said Majid became Sultan of Zanzibar and its dependent dependence dependencies. And in 1870, Sajid Majid died and was succeeded by his brother, Saeed Baga. By this time, the British were increasingly involved with the island, as they appointed a consul on the name of John Kirk to Zanzibar, whose primary task was ending the notorious slave trade. And in 1873, Baga signed a treaty to end the slave trade there, and the year the treaty was signed was particularly significant as it was I'd say same year that the anti-slavery explorer David Livingston died in the African interior as his body was embalmed and transported to Zanzibar to be delivered, delivered to Kirk, not only as the consul but also one of Livingston's intimate friends, internet being close. As in 1885, 
Sounds about well, had a Friday firing export trade again in ivory and rubber, but from the interior of the continent, while the Sultan who wields loose authority through Tabar and Ujiji, sorry for me to mispronounce that, and in August, however, news arrived that Germans were claiming the protection of the island region as five German warships arrived in the lagoon of Zanzibar and trained their guns on the Sultan's pal palace, demanding that the Bargash to secede, secede to the German Emperor his mainland territories. And under the pressure from Britain, wishing to find a compromise and authority defending Germany, the consul persuaded Bargash to sign an agreement to secede the majority of his mainland territories with details. Still, that will yet to be decided. As a joint Anglo-German boundary commission worked to redistribute the Sultan's inland territory leaving Bargash with 10 nautical mile wide strip along the coast stretching from Cape Durango which is now in Mozambique and Kipini now Kenya including Moban Mobasa, Dar es Salaam and all offshore islands and several times in what is now Somalia. And behind that line was a drawn was drawn from Mount Kilimanjaro to Lake Victoria. Above the line was the British sphere of influence and below was German. As the today to this day it kind of but is has become since become the border of Tanzania and Kenya. As for our indigenous indigenous languages are spoken throughout Zanzibar. Swahili is one of the most predominant, is uh, which is called as Kishwahili locally. This language is also spoken as a language by Swahili people along the East African coast, particularly in Kenya and Tanzania, as explained in their videos, and as a second or third language by others throughout Africa, like. Kenya and Tanzania. As Swahili is a common language in the region. And there are many forms and dialects found in different areas with visitor as it can be a useful tool. And yeah, there's also English is also the there is Zanzibar is regarded as a home of Swahili and it is spoken as in its purest form there and as well as in pockets on in Tanzania and Kenya as in fact in these areas tradition di traditional dialects tradition dictates that ordinary conversation should approximate the elegance of poetry as generally but may get more basic and simplified when you go further go to the African mainland. As English and several other European languages like French and Italian are spoken in Zanzibar town and tourist areas. But and like Arabic is also used in spoken within the country. Or region. Yeah. And yeah, we're, for legends we're going back to the Queen of Sheba. So yeah. As the sea said to the Queen, Queen of Sheba, well, at sea, well, she was at sea, like, promised she'll return again. And she threw a pearl necklace into the sea and said, the sea in the seaside of us is not enough, and she threw two treasure chests in the sea which sprang open. From these treasures, the magical islands of Zanzibar were formed, as the island was, archipelago was said to be created from that. Anyway, it's like a legend of that not legend is as real. In Zanzibar as anything else as a history is long and abundant 
to the island. And yeah. And as like the previously aforementioned Stone Town is now a World Heritage Site and the Microlithic tours have been dated back to 20,000 years to the later Stone Age and the island have also been mentioned in text dating back to the 1st to the 3rd centuries AD as it was a kind of like a base for voyages between Middle East, India, the Middle East, India and Africa as it was a convenient place to trade from the Swahili coast and the eastern coast of Africa a lot to uh, places like India and all that as a larger island offered a protect in defensible harbour and the Persians settled at what became Stone Town. As the islands are were rich in spices and all And name is also associated with a group of islands in Indonesia. As the islands became popular destinations for Rati, as it's home to can be home to Persian princes and sultans from India. As yeah, the Europeans joined them. What well, today is mainly peaceful place, dominated by the Arabic culture and like Islam, but it doesn't exactly stop diversity and all. As it can be seen in youth, as the depth of history can be seen through like the stone tower towns, narrow streets. As the buildings are like a couple of hundred years old, at best, maybe even older. <coughs> As the what adorn those houses is can, can kind of represent the stature of the family and homeowners. As it can help distinguish those from far, like further away, like who's like royalty and who like who has a different cultural background. As there is also kind of like as like the do doors of arches can represent in the in. Indian families and the symbol of two snakes and leopard mean that the home owner is of royal descent as there's also the presence of Christ the Christian religion as there's a Christchurch cathedral which was under restor which is under restoration at some point As the location was known, was a, as it was also ironically the location of where the slaves were being housed during like the slave trade, as the island was infamous for a major hub for slave trade. As the current oldest current building in the stone town is an Arabic fort built in the seventeenth century by the Omanis to protect themselves from the Portuguese. As the House of Wonders sits, ne Wonders sits next to the fort and is a symbol of the affluence Zanzibar once had in the past. And it was given this moncare because it was the first, once the first building to have electricity and an elevator in Eastern Africa. In 1883 the building was commissioned to be a reception hall and celebrated modern era of the city. And built by the Sultan, Sultan of Zanzibar. As the old town also has a market filled with fish and fruit, sledge and other goods that will make you feel uh, that can, hasn't really changed much as such. So, yeah. 
Bye, Zanzibar, for you, and I'll see you soon. So, bye for now.